uh, which, which I won't name here, uh, which has vast numbers of customers but actually can be associated with, with, with some, some, some difficulties and, and some, perhaps some lifestyle issues you might say. How, how, do you, how do you look at the downside as well as the fact that they're making an absolute fortune for you? Is that company changing society for the better? Or is it not changing society for the better? It's a very, very subjective judgment in there. But presumably, the, 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 uh, but, but not, not definitely. I mean, you, you, you could be talking about uh, some, some things which absolutely didn't uh, en enhance society. Uh, but I, but I, won't go, I won't go into to those areas because I don't want to be gratuitously controversial on this, on this occasion. So these are the, 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 the issues, and I, and I think, as I say, that the, 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 the way to resolve them, the way to, to resolve the, the, the dichotomy between public benefit and the free uh, diffusion of knowledge, the democratization of knowledge, and then the restriction uh, of, of, uh, of knowledge rights through intellectual property, the way you do that is that you measure the impact, and then universities, which have a, create a fantastic social impact, and make money, they'll they'll get the best deal, which is which I think is how it should be, such as hopefully Cambridge. By the way, just a, an aside, the of the new startups in Cambridge, typically um, 35 to 40 percent of them will have will will have a, a social benefit, if you like, or a quasi philanthropic benefit as their main objective. They won't be profit led. Now, now to come to come back to to, to Churchill. Uh, Ch Churchill, you know, complained about Stalin on the issue of profit and 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 and, and Russian communism on the subject of profits as being profit being evil. And, and Churchill, Churchill's line was, it's it's actually making a loss that's evil, not making, not making a profit. But what you need is a what you need is a balance. So profits are good, and ideally, what you'd have is profits which are linked to beneficial social impact, which is it, it is a difficult balance to to maintain. And the way you do it is, is by a very very rigorous, sophisticated, and creative way uh, of, of, of analysing impact and taking public opinion into account when you when you do that. Because again, the we're talking essentially about elites, and it would be interesting to take. Uh, the public's view of what is uh, beneficial social impact, and not necessarily the, the elites from a from a university. The example now, because I, I, I've I think I've gone beyond beyond time, not too not too much beyond time. The example I'll give you is so I find it quite hard not to walk around because I usually walk around, so I feel trapped here slightly. Um, it, what, one of our students, a guy called Tom Britton, who, who uh, you, you, you can read about him on the the internet, inevitably. He, he was in college recently, he, we, we see a fair, a fair bit of him, and he set up something called the Syndicate Room. So now just come to on a bit of practical advice which we can enlarge upon in the, what will follow the, after Marley has spoken a question and answer session about some of the technicalities of setting up business incubators, seed money, um, venture capital and so on. But to just take this idea away for, for free, uh, if, 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 if you will. And so, so Tom has come up with the, 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 the syndicate room, and what that is, it's a crowd, he's taken a crowdfunding model, but he's very, very cleverly adapted it. There's no, there's no patent on this, he's, he, he just has um, what you'll know as first mover advantage, so he's the first to do it, he got off the ground quickly with, uh, with his co-founder, whose name, I, I, I confess, I can't remember, it's much more difficult to pronounce than Tom Britton. Very, very clever guy as well. So he's taken the crowdfunding model, but what he's done, he's adapted it in a rather brilliant way, in a very, very successful way. He's, in each area of investment, biotechnology, IT, software, engineering, he's, he, he's brought in lead investors who are experts. Uh, and so they'll they analyze the, each, each company offering uh, they'll, they'll vet it and they'll do in-depth research, they'll, not, not just in terms of the people, but in terms of the market potential. Uh, they're, they're paid, of course, to do that, but then they, they, they are a lead investor in this company. So the, the, the way I would put it, if you want, do, does everyone know the English word curate? Um, they, cu they curate crowdfunding opportunities. This is a simple way of putting it, but it's actually an accurate way of putting it. Uh, I actually said to Tom, do you mind if I... Uh, a while ago, do, do, do you mind if I use the word curate? And he said, no, that, 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 that pretty much explains it. So the crowd funders have, have the, the assurance that experts not only have, have looked at these companies and analysed them, they've also invested a, a large amount of money in them, 
and the, and the share issues, they don't get, um, the crowd funders don't get uh, a different category of share so it's, it's, uh, to, to, the, to the lead investors, so the lead investors don't get preferential shares. Does everyone know what I mean by preferential shares? Yeah, so, so they get the same class of share as the, as the lead investors, which is, if I, I, I wouldn't personally contribute to, to, to many crowdfunding uh, issues, uh, the, the, the public issue, but, but I, would, I would contribute to, the, to that of the syndicate room um, because it gives you a real assurance of the quality of the, um, uh, of the, uh, of the company and the innovation uh, that, that's on offer. And they, they, they've actually just, they've just made uh, a big sale of one of their, of one of their uh, the, the companies which has come through that system. So some, I mean, look, look out for them actually, the syndicate room, because they could well be a massive company before long. They have the potential to be a massive company using, using that model. And they have enough money now to keep their first mover advantage um, and keep themselves ahead of the competition. And now I'm sounding very, very entrepreneurial. So yeah, that, 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 that's, my, that's my time. So I hope that's been interesting to you and giving you a sense of, of, of what, um, what the situation is in, in the UK. In terms of maybe say a little bit, if, if I might take the time, I'm not eating into a Marlis tank, should be far more interesting than me. It, the, 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 the situation in Yerevan is much different to the UK. You have a whole series of economic challenges, I don't need to tell you, which are much different to that of the UK. You know, a, a domestic market of two and a half million, um, uh, not, not the same incentive schemes, to the best of my knowledge, as the, the you'd have in, in Great Britain, seed enterprise investment schemes in which you get huge tax relief, 50% on investments in startup companies, something called the incubator uh, box, um, so, sorry, the patent box, forgive me, the patent box, which I told, uh, interestingly, Marley hadn't heard of this, so I told Marley about this yesterday, and you can, <clears throat> you, you can pay about 10% tax no more than 10% tax if you invest in a, in a recently patented uh, in, invention and the commercialization of that invention. It goes right down to, 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 to 20%, it, it, so from 20%. It can, it can actually go down lower than that um, under certain circumstances. So if, if you invest in patents or, or in, um, in the licensing of patents, you, you pay virtually no tax at all. The other, just one final issue, not, 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 not to end on a dark note, but the, not, the, the note of bankruptcy. Um, but bankruptcy laws and insolvency laws are, are really important in the way that you wind up failing companies. Um, if, if you wind up failing companies in, in quite a punitive way, it, make, it, it's, it, it doesn't encourage entrepreneurship. Every entrepreneur, or most entrepreneurs, will have gone through a, a stage of failure. And... Which, which you might recharacterize as, uh, as, a, as an obstacle which inevitably falls in their path or even as an opportunity. Uh, you can characterize them as a sometimes failure in, in, in that way. But in the UK and the US, it's very, very easy to settle with your creditors, possibly restructure and refinance the company and then carry on and, 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 or say, look, this, is, this has failed, but you can bounce back in, say, two years or less in the, in the United States. Because if you punish people for supposedly failing in inverted commas, you're, 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 you're punishing the very, very narrow group of people who've got the, the guts and, 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 the, and the determination to try and set up a business. It's not an easy thing to set up a business. And so at least give them, at least give them two or three chances. Serial, serial failures might be, might be more of an issue, you might be a little bit more brutal about, about serial failures. Quite, quite clearly because you can, you can end up with a lot of very upset investors and, and actually people who are just exploiting the system. But you need a degree of sensitivity and you need to make creditors aware of the, the reasons. Information to creditors is another key, um, another key factor in successful ban bankruptcy and, uh, and insolvency laws. But let's not think about such things because everyone is thinking about success and, 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 and bankruptcy won't, just won't, won't happen. And it certainly won't happen in, uh, in Amali's case. Uh, so thank, thank you for, for listening and um, thank you again for, for having me in this, um, in this marvellous city. I, I really enjoyed being here and I'm um, hugely, hugely impressed by it and by the people actually. Um, I almost said by the way, but this, this, that might make me sound like Donald Trump, so I won't, I won't use that phrase. Um, but I am hugely impressed by the, 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 the people a lot. The Lewis Foundation scholars really are outstanding and some of the other people that I've met, but all of them actually. Have been, have been really very impressive 
and and committed in, in, in quite a, a, a noble way, I think, to the you know to, 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 to their cause, but also, if you like, to the Armenian cause and and, and, and the cause of, of boosting the Armenian economy. Um, so thank you, thank you. I'll introduce Amalia because she needs an introduction. So Amalia Kostanayan is, is one of our PhD students and it, it is the, the latest in a, in, a, in a small number actually, but a hugely impressive Armenian students who've come to, to Hughes Hall and I hope others follow. And she, Amalia is quite a difficult act to follow actually. So um, I'm glad I went first. I think I will just struggle to stay and not move. Okay, let's find my presentation first. Okay, so. It's very difficult to talk about something and not present what I'm doing, actually. So I think first couple of slides are going to be about nanotechnology. That is what I actually do. So, as Richard already mentioned, I'm a PhD candidate in Cambridge University, working in, um, in the sphere of uh, uh, material science development, and in particular, growing uh, new generation uh, materials with new set of properties, uh, depending what type of applications we are interested, depending what type of uh, aspects they will be used. Um, so, um, so here basically I'm presenting a couple of, sorry, okay, so I think, is this okay? The level of my voice? Okay, thank you. So basically here, uh, it's just a couple of examples um, what I do. Um, so the third one uh, is actually the material that I grow. It's, uh, it's called graphene, which is two-dimensional material, as it's called. Uh, and it's called two-dimensional because it's intrinsic uh, careers. Are, uh, um, are basically spread throughout the whole material and because of that and because it's one atom thick and it's uh, 